All right, so here we're going to do uh, hypothesis testing, and it's going to be a left-tailed test, and sigma is unknown. Okay, I have some, I have a, I have videos where sigma is known. Uh, you can check those out if you need to, but these, this and this one is where sigma is unknown, so we don't know the population standard deviation. All right, so. In hypothesis testing, we need to state our null and alternate hypothesis. So the claim about mu, the population mean, that's our, our null hypothesis is, hypothesis is mu equals some number k. And for a left-tailed test, we believe that mu is less than the value stated in the null hypothesis. So our alternate hypothesis, h sub 1, would be mu is less than k, or mu is less than the stated value. All right, so, you know, a left tail test would look, you know, like this. And that's the probability we need. All right, so our test statistic, well, because sigma is unknown, uh, we have to use the student's t distribution. Okay, so our test statistic is t is equal to x bar minus mu over s divided by the square root of n with degrees of freedom n minus 1. We'll have to use this to look up our values in the stu student's t-distribution table. And x bar is the mean of a simple random sample. Mu is the stated value in the null hypothesis h naught. S is the sample standard deviation and n is the sample size. So how do we conclude the test? Well, to conclude a test using p-values, if the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, we reject the null hypothesis and say the data are statistically significant at the level alpha. That HE shouldn't be there. If the p-value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on our example. And it says, there's a lake in Nevada. The lake is famous for its trout. Now suppose you have a friend that tells you the average length of the trout caught in the lake is mu equals 19 inches. Okay, That's of all the trout in the lake. That's the population mean. Mu is 19 inches. However, a survey reported that a random sample of 51 fish caught, the mean length was x bar equals 18.5 inches with estimated standard deviation, s is equal to 3.2 inches. Now, this x bar and this s, the sample mean and sample standard deviation, we get that from just these 51 fish, okay? That's where that comes from. So if, if you went and if, say, somebody caught 51 fish and they recorded the lengths of all of those 51 fish, you would add up all those lengths and divide by 51, and that would give you the sample mean. And then you would have you would go and use your standard deviation formula and take those 51 measurements, calculate that in the standard deviation formula, and that would give you your sample standard deviation. Okay, so do these data indicate? the average length of a trout caught in the lake is less than the population mean mu equals 19 inches. Use alpha equals 0 0.05. All right, so, and you can see that the sample mean that we got from the 51 is less than the population mean 19 inches. So our, our null hypothesis is going to be mu equals 19 inches. That's the claim we're making. That the that's the claim they're making that the average length is 19 inches. Well, our our alternate hypothesis 
based on these 51 fish caught, we're saying, well, the mean is less than 19. Okay, so this is a left-tailed test. All right, so now we need to calculate our test statistic T, which is X bar minus mu over S divided by square root of N, where in this case X bar is 18.5, mu is 19, uh, let's see, S is 3.2, and N is 51. Okay, and also we're going to need our degrees of freedom, which is N minus 1, which equals 50. We need the degrees of freedom to look up in our student's T distribution table. So let's go ahead and calculate our test statistic. So T is equal to X bar minus mu over S divided by the square root of N. All right, so we get we get a negative 1.116. That's our t distribution. I mean our test statistic, our t value. All right, so now let's find our p value. So for our p value, we have to go into the student's t distribution table and we've got negative 1.116 rounded to three decimal places that's what I have to look up so let's come over here to our T table alright and notice and see I'm gonna look up these values in here and notice all of them's positive but we got we got a negative 1.116 well we just look up the positive and that gives us the that'll give us that area to the left okay all right so first thing I've got my degrees of freedom okay so I've got to come down here looks like that's gonna be off the screen up there but here's my degrees of freedom 50 so what I'm looking at is this row right here okay and I need to find 1.116 and you can see that 1.116 is not on here but we can see that the 1.116 it's between these two numbers here you see that so it's between this so Well, let's see. So let's go up, okay, because we got to get up here to our probability, okay, and we have a left tailed test. So this is a one tail, okay. The we got a we got a left tail and a right tail. The left tail and the right tail, those are one tail. That's one tail area, and we'll do a video later. I'll do a I'll have another video up for a two-tail test okay well what that does is that tells us that we have to go to the one tail area and we know we know that our probability is between these two numbers here okay because our our 1.116 is between 0.679 and 1.164 and so we know our probability is going to lie between see the probability for 0.679 is 0 0.25 and for 1.164 it's 0 0.125 and so our value of 1.116 the positive our probability is between these two numbers here okay so let's go back to our problem
And so instead of putting our p-value equals, well, what do we know? We know that our p-value was between those two probabilities that we saw in the student's t-distribution table. The 0.125, that's a less than sign, and the uh, 0.25, okay? Our p-value is between there somewhere. Now, our alpha, our alpha is equal to 0 0.05, 0 0.05. Well, you see this 0.125 and this 0.25, well, 0.125 is larger than 0 0.05, okay, and 0.25 is also larger than 0 0.05. And if our p-value is between these two values, then we know that our p-value is greater than 0 0.05, okay. So since our p-value is greater than 0 0.05, we fail to reject H null, the null hypothesis. And so what does this mean? Well, at the 5% level of significance, the sample data of the 51 fish do not indicate that the average trout length is less than 19 inches. Okay. All right. So I hope this helped. Um, I'm I'm, I'm going to do videos on all the hypothesis testing uh, where sigma is known, unknown, the proportion p. I'll do the left tail, right tail, and two tail. I'm just going to do them each in separate videos. So I hope this video helped. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my other videos. All right, thanks.